to Elsie's celebration of life service. On behalf of the Smith family, we would like to thank all the friends, the students, as well as the faculty, staff, and coaches of Lafayette High School for being here today and the larger community of St. Joe as well. I am Brother David L. Jones from the Order of Celtic Franciscans and the Senior Army Instructor for Lafayette High School. Let us pray. From Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth should change, though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea, though waters roar in foam, though mountains tremble with its swelling, be still and know that I am God. Lord God, the one who welcomed all into his arms, we ask you to give us the strength and grace to make it through this day in all the days that you grant us. We rely on the promise that you are with us now and for all the ages. You call with the news, I thought you were kidding. You're always joking all the time. You kept breathing, but stopped living. Held it like poison inside. They say everything happens for a reason But it only makes you mad Cause how in the hell can you believe them When nothing brings her back It's hard to know What she would say But I think she wants you to live like the world She just went to the store And when you look into the mirror Does it make you miss her more? When I knew she was always on your side Never missed a match And when you see the moon, do you remember? She loved you then
Today we say farewell to Elsie, but also celebrate her life. There is a tear in the very heart of God at this time and this moment of incredible pain and sadness. And yet, there's hope. God raised his son Jesus from the dead so that we might have hope that his daughter Elsie will also be raised in the same way. Jesus said, I am the light. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though they die. The Gospel of John. We do believe. And we have hope. At this time, we're going to celebrate her life and her own family and friends are, are going to share memories, treasure memories and thoughts about her. Her uh, sister, Angel, will be the first. And so Angel, if Come up and share your memories. As he said, I'm, I'm her older sister. Uh, I, I tried to write something for this, but I ended up with like four pages of stuff, so. Um, obviously nobody was ready, but when, when will you be ever? Elsie was so happy till the very, very end, and I bet you she's still happy up there. And I know we're all sad right now, but Elsie was the type that she would want us all to be happy and she would all want, it, want us all to keep smiling for her and keep joking for her and keep laughing for her because that's what she loved to do. She always had the biggest smile on her face even when she was upset or mad. She was always laughing. She was the best little sister ever. She was not the, probably one of the best of us kids. <laughs> she always made everybody's day. She always brightened a room. She had the brightest soul of everybody I knew. It was like being Surrounded by the brightest white and yellow light, and it was always so comforting. And I bet you she's probably in this room with us right now, listening and here for all of us. And I Definitely, I'm gonna miss her something fierce, and I know everybody will. And I know, I bet you she'll come back eventually just to make people's lives better again, in a different way, and in a different form. I guess that's probably all I've got to say. Thank you, Angel. Thank you. The next memories to be shared will be by Master Sergeant Retired 
Jamal Ayers. I was uh, not prepared to speak today. Um, then the colonel surprised me and pulled me inside the office and I thought I was in trouble with Dr. McGinnis again. <laughs> <laughs> but I found out that uh, uh, their parents wanted me to say a few words. So uh, I had to write it down or so I'll go off in a tangent and my New York, Brooklyn will come out of me and so I'll do my best. Um, Elsie was a young lady uh, of very few words when it came to talking to me. It was only three words she said, three lines. High top, stop top, that's not funny top. But for a young lady, a few words, she was a joy not only to teach, but a joy to have around, especially her smile and her wittiness. There was no task that Elsie was not up for the challenge. Raiders, color guard, drill team, color guard commander, and first year drill team commander. Life in the drill hall, We'll never be the same without Elsie. Not only did Faith and Nathan Sr. lose a daughter and her siblings lose a sister, Lafayette lost a student, JRTC lost a cadet, but I feel I, um, as if I lost a daughter. Words cannot express the loss we all feel. So I have a poem that I use to help myself during my troubled times of sorrow. I kind of change the words around just to, a little bit to reflect Elsie. Who will cry for Elsie? Who will cry for Elsie gone and all alone? Who will cry for Elsie abandoned without her own? Who will cry for Elsie we cry ourselves to sleep? Who will cry for Elsie we will never have for keeps? Who will cry for Elsie she walks along with God? Who will cry for Elsie the little girl she will always be. Who will cry for Elsie, who knows no more pain and hurt? Who will cry for Elsie, who in our hearts died and died again? Who will cry for Elsie, the good girl she tried to be? Who will cry for Elsie, who cries inside of me? Who will cry for Elsie? Me. I will. I just want to thank the family for um, allowing me to speak today. And I'm so sorry for your loss. Thank you, Tom. And now we'll hear memories from her best friends. Today, we come together and celebrate this beautiful angel, Elsie Smith, my best friend. I've known Elsie for four years now, ever since fifth grade. I can still remember the first time I seen her. Her and Cadence were sitting on a swing set, and I had just came out for recess. 
I just remember thinking that this little girl was the most adorable girl I have ever seen. Over the years, we have become closer and closer. Elsie was the one that everyone can come to if they needed anything. She would always be there for me, if it was over a boy or a friend or any kind of drama. No matter what it was, she was there. Elsie was there. Elsie was the one that, whether I win or lose, she'll always cheer me on. I can still remember her saying, "Go, Noodle." Noodle was the nickname she gave me. It was mainly Noodley or Little Noodles, but eventually it changed to Noodle. But no matter how easy or how hard something was, she never let me give up. Elsie was the most supportive, kind-hearted human to ever touch the earth. She did so much for everyone, and she never expected anything in return. Sometimes I wonder if she ever heard me say thank you. She was so humble. I never knew how she did so much for her family, her friends, and her school, and kept moving every single day. I really don't know how she did it. She was such a strong woman, and she was amazing at everything. Well, besides pitching. The last time I seen her, I was teaching her how to pitch this ball. There was a net right in front of us, and well, she didn't hit the net. It went straight to the floor. I remember her looking up at me and smiling. God, that smile could light up a room. I know that a lot of us are going through this hard time, especially the family, but just know that everything happens for a reason. Even if we don't like the reason, we still have to accept it. And for some of us, that's going to take a long time, and that's okay. I know she's looking down on all of us, even you, Top. And I bet she's so proud of us, and know that one day you will see her again, whether it be her playing the flute, kicking a ball, commanding her own little drill team, or even just doing arts and crafts. She always seemed to love doing that with her family. But no matter where or how or when you see her, just know that she's happy. I met Elsie in a time where I was convinced that no one wanted to be friends with me. I was scared for the fifth grade to be without friends. In the fourth grade, Elsie was shy, and we didn't really talk much. In the fifth, I can't remember how it happened, but we became best friends. We'd cartwheel all around the track all recess just to prove that we could, and we'd play really dumb games on the little kid playground. In the sixth grade, we'd have sleepovers, and I texted her on my mom's phone. In the seventh, we'd video call and talk all the time. About her first boyfriend, TikToks, school, and about family. In the eighth grade, we talked on Discord, and we both complained a lot. In the ninth grade, we worked on school, we watched TV, we talked about what we'd do when we had money, and we talked about how much we loved fairy tale. On the last day, she smiled. If there's one thing that I'm sure about, it's that Elsie loved her family more than anything. She'd never hesitate to end one of those long phone calls to help them. She'd never hesitate to say no to a sleepover because she was babysitting or doing something outside that I probably would have cried if I had to do. Elsie sent heart emojis and said bye, love. Elsie decided that the nickname KK wasn't enough and called me KK Bear. Elsie gave Natalie noodle. She laughed when she found something funny, like me being mad for a dumb reason. Elsie lied for you. She'd tell you that you were good at something just because she knew that, that it mattered to you, and she'd laugh with you when you discovered that you were bad. We could sit here for hours and talk about how much she laughed. She laughed on time because she could tell when you would. She made jokes and funny faces and danced and sang. She liked country music and Ed Sheeran. She wasn't a huge fan of roller coaster coasters, and she didn't like the smell of ranch. She loved being an RO and didn't just do it for the credits. When we were younger, she wanted to be a kindergarten teacher, and she once told me she thought about being a military nurse. I'm not sure if that thought changed, but I know that she would have been amazing at anything she did. Elsie loved having little siblings, even when she yelled at them over the phone. She liked being outside. She liked tacos and supreme pizza and Hershey's. She rarely judged. She didn't really complain about people, and she didn't ask questions. Can you talk to this teacher with me? And it was a yes. Can you listen? Yes. Elsie's company gave you comfort, and her laughs made you laugh. She was funny and kind and happy. Elsie was always happy, even when she wasn't. So we should be too. Always happy, even when you're not. I want to speak from the heart. A famous writer once wrote that beauty saves the world. 
what a beautiful human being in Elsie. Her human face exuded beauty. Every room that she entered, she had a smile on her face. Just bringing joy, happiness, and a and she had a killer smirk. You know, I've been really thinking over, over the last week how to describe Elsie. In one word, really resonated. She was a saint, a saint who was in our midst. And that realization actually came when. We were in the lower gym for JRTC, and I was playing a little bit of rock and roll music. And uh, Natalie came up and, and sat down right next to me, and she had that baseball. She had the baseball right in her hand. And he said, sir, can I have this baseball? And I looked at her and I said, you know, why do you want this baseball? She said, as she told us all, I, I was teaching Elsie how to fast pitch with this ball. It had you know, Elsie touched this ball. My best friend held this ball, and I want to keep it. So I apologize to the, the baseball team and the coach. We, uh, <laughs> we, we, uh, we snatch your baseball. I'll give you a Twinkie in return. <laughs> and then I was in the drill hall. I, came in last weekend and turned off the alarms and, and went in to go find her uniform. And of course, Nate didn't put it where he should have. But I found it. And I came to set it on, on our tables. And, and Top and I had already agreed to promote her to cadet Sergeant First Class, which, guys, this is only the second time in the history of program that a cadet, a freshman cadet, let one cadet in, in our program, at least during my tenure, had ever made that rank. Dave Rao was the first one. Not only did she make it through every promotion board of Mass Star and Anderson, she won Soldier of the Month, Cadet of the Month, every month. And as I was taking off her old rank and, and placing that sort of first class rank on On her shoulder boards, my hands trembling. I said, I'm not worthy to be handling her uniform. Who am I? 
And that's when I realized, you know, the conversation with Natalie and in my own experience, I said, wow, you know, an angel, a saint, was right here with us. And when I say a saint, a saint isn't someone who lives a, a perfect life. There's no saint ever lived a perfect life, but they shared in the very righteousness of God. The holiness of God just shined right through them. And anybody that ever knew Elsie or met her would deny that shine, that happiness, that joy. She was an incredibly beautiful person. And that came from the inside, shining outward. Elsie was also a natural born leader. As Top and I and, and other combat veterans, uh, Sergeant Major and Colonel and, and other soldiers in the crowd will tell you. Um, you know, a person can be a supervisor, they can be a manager, but only a few are leaders. Elsie was just a natural leader. You know, I was showing Dad just last night, we were looking through the photos. And in one of the, the most simplest photos, I think, shows that through and through. It was at a Raider competition, and it's sort of the, the law sort of hurdles, and, and there's usually about a dozen of them. And Nate, her older brother, would just sort of flop his legs over and, you know, it's no issue, but for those of us smaller in demeanor, you know, demeanor like like Jasmine and, and others, um, you know, it, it's it, it's you know a little bit of struggle to get over those. You got to jump up and, and flip over. But Elsie was leading the Raider team through that obstacle course. But instead of worrying about herself had turned around and was making sure everybody behind her was getting through it. I saw it then. I saw it a hundred times after that. But Elsie wasn't just a, a natural born leader. She had a servant's heart Every second harvest that we did as part of the RO program, Elsie was there. Giving up her own time and serving the greater community of St. Joe and Buchanan County and Northwest Missouri and, and regions all Northeast Kansas. Elsie would give her shirt right off her back to help a fellow human being. This is what in the army we would say a servant leader. Someone who would always take care of others before they took care of themselves. What a witness. What an amazing 
human person. I'm grateful. I'm sure everyone in this auditorium was grateful to have known her, to love her, to have shared friendships with her, who had been on the volleyball team or the soccer team with her, who had been in metal working with her. She was the same. And let's remember her. Let us pray. Eternal Father, our creator and great mystery, hear this humble prayer. Would you in your great mercy and affection take Elsie unto yourself and into your peace, a peace that is beyond our understanding? For her great beauty and love of life, we're thankful. Truly, truly grateful. In the quiet and peace of your time, may she go to you. And in her going, may there be no regrets for leaving loved ones as we know we will all be together with her again in your time. Give this noble person who has gone before you now and all of us that love her and the band of brothers and sisters who remain the strength to serve you faithfully and unselfishly with con continued compassion to complete Elsie's mission here on earth. Father, we thank you for the blessing of Elsie. Let us now begin anew that which is without end, the new life and the new day, where there is no more separation, where all the tears be wiped from our mind, and where we will never lose her again. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now, I would ask you to Direct your attention to the following at that table. The table, this table, is Elsie's cadet desk from Lafayette High School Drill Hall. It shows us our everlasting concern for our fallen cadet and Elsie being the Lafayette student. The table is set for one. It's small. It's actually our, our let one table. That's in Master and Anderson's classroom. It's small, but it occupies a place of dignity and honor. The white tablecloth symbolizes the purity of her attentions and her life. The single red rose 
reminds us of her life and the loved ones and friends who will miss her each and every day. The vase is tied with a green ribbon, a symbol of our continued determination, especially here for our Lafayette folks, that we will always remember. The slice of lemon on the plate reminds us of the bitter fate that she will never return. The pinch of salt, the salt shaker, reminds us of the countless volunteers of her family and friends. The inverted wine glass. She cannot toast with us at this time. The empty chair. She is no longer with us. The candle is reminiscent of the light of hope which lives in our hearts to illuminate her way home. To the open arms of Jesus and in God's timing, a reunion with her family, friends, and a grateful school. And now we will have the presentation of the American flag by Mass Sergeant retired Jamal Anderson. Now for the plane of taps. I would like to thank Lafayette Cadet and band member Joseph Bruca for that beautiful rendition. Lord God, we ask you to give us the grace to entrust our sister Elsie to your never failing care and love. 
as Jesus, during his earthly life, took even the children into his arms and blessed them, may you now receive this dear one unto yourself. Draw those of us who remain closer to one another in community. Make us faithful to comfort and serve one another as Elsie did for us. Give us the wisdom to know the peace and joy which is eternal life through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. God, our refuge and our strength, close at hand in our distress, continue to be with us in our sorrow and lift our eyes to the peace and light of your constant perpetual care. Hear us and help us with your word of graces that our fear will be dispelled by your love, our loneliness at ease by your presence, and our hope renewed by your promises. May eternal rest come to her, O oh Lord, and let your perpetual light shine upon her. And may she rest in peace. May those who mourn her today find comfort and healing in your sustained grace. As we go from this sacred place, we ask for God's blessing for all of us to carry on. Great mystery, Father and creator of all humankind, who keeps our journey and marks the horizon of our destiny, loves us throughout our journey to tomorrow. Son of God, divine leader and keeper of the maps, show us not the whole road at once, but give us a distance to be gained in single steps. Spirit of God who holds the inner compass, May your presence on the journey awaken trust within us that when we don't know what lies around the bend, we can still have hope. Bless us to this uncertain step that we shall find the step more certain one day at a time, one hour at a time, one step at a time. Amen. In the certain and sure hope that the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and to the eternal life that he brings us, We 
commit to Almighty God the soul of our sister Elsie. The Lord bless her and keep her. The Lord make her face shine down upon her and be gracious unto her. The Lord lift up his countenance upon her and give her peace. Amen. Loving can hurt Loving can hurt sometimes but it's the only thing that I know When it gets hard You know it can get hard sometimes It is the only thing that makes us feel alive Keep this love in a photograph We make these memories for ourselves Where our eyes are never closing Hearts are never broken and Time's forever frozen still So you can keep me Inside the pocket of your ripped jeans Holding me closer till our eyes meet You won't Never be alone Wait for me to come home Loving can heal Loving can mend your soul And it's the only thing that I know, know. I swear it will get easier with every piece of you mm -hmm. And it's the only thing we take with us when we die mm -hmm. We keep this love in a photograph We make these memories for ourselves Where our eyes are never closing Hearts were never broken Time's forever frozen still So you can keep me Inside the pocket of your ripped jeans Holding me closer till our eyes meet You won't ever be alone And if you hurt me That's okay, baby
This concludes the formal portion of the LC Celebration of Life Service. With the assistance of the Meyerhofer staff, they will do a dismissal from the rear forward. And so if you desire to pay your final respects to Elsie, please do so at this moment. Never forget her. Irish forever. 